Beginning with version 2.4 and continuing with the following versions, one identity is changing the architecture of the Safeguard product. If you today have a look on the Safeguard for Privileged Passwords and the Safeguard for Privileged Session Appliance that can be purchased by one identity, you will see that you have both functionalities together in one box. The software we are using to do the session management is based on the Balabit software. Balabit is a Hungarian software company that was recently acquired by one identity. So with the upcoming and next versions, we're going to change the internal version of the Balabit software running on the appliance to run on an external appliance that will be integrated in the user interface and the current workflow as usual. So for instance, if you have a look on the settings page, you're going to see a section called sessions. And this is used to manage the internal version of the Balabit session management software in the appliance. So if you enable the so-called join feature of Safeguard 2.4 and 2.5, you will see that this session section in the setting page will disappear and that the internal version of the software is no longer available. Instead, it will be handled by the external version of the software running on its own appliance. If you want to play around with that, there's a word of warning. This feature is currently experimental. It's not intended to be used in a productive environment. So if you want to have a look on it, feel free to do. If you want to use it in a productive and you're enhancing problems, you're on your own. The second one is, once you have enabled the join from the Safeguard appliance to the former Balabit appliance, now it's called Safeguard for Privileged Sessions, SPS, then there is no way back. The only way back, of course, should, would be to have a factory reset on the hardware appliance of the, of the Safeguard system, or to take a backup first before doing the join, and then restoring your backup, and that will revert the appliance to the original state. So let's have a look on this. Before I do this, I would follow my own recommendation and do a backup. Otherwise, I, I may be sorry. So let's go on me the backup and do a backup now. Is it do a backup fresh? Uh, here we are. Complete it. Now we have a backup. We can go to the appropriate state before the join. So as I said, please have a backup first. That's always a good decision before you do anything. Okay, to do the join, you first have to do some pre-configurations on the session proxy side or on the session management appliance. So in this case, log in with your user or with the administrative user to your appliance. And we want, don't want to save this. And be sure that you have at least version 5.9 of the appliance. Or use the latest version that is available on the support portal for testing. With prior to 5.9, it is not really working. As I have said, this is just work in progress. So at least use please 5.9 something. Otherwise, it may break. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is go to basic settings and go to local services and enable your local SSH server because you have to log into the to the appliance to do the join and without a proper SSH access to the appliance it will not work. Okay, so enable it, commit the change, up, and now it should work. Oh, I just forget. If you are configuring a SSH server, please be sure to click check enable password authentication and commit. Otherwise, you cannot log in. Okay, once you have done this, start your standard SSH client. In my case, this is putty, and I just log into something that is it's called SCB. That's the address or the logical DNS name of my privileged session management appliance. And I log in, and of course you have to log in as the root account, not as the admin account as you're doing to the web interface. Use the root account, use your password. 
you have set during your installation. And now you're going to see a warning because I'm already logged in as an admin user on the on the web interface. I really want to log in, yes, so you can have it in parallel. And now you're going to see a little bit of a menu. And the important one here is join to SPP. And SPP is the new product name for the safeguard appliance. It's called for safeguard for privileged password. So in, in the future, you have safeguard for privileged passwords and safeguard for privileged sessions, SPP and SPS. And it is pretty much simple. Just select join to SPP. And then you have to fill in the IP address of the appliance. In my case, this is usually do not use IP addresses. So just going to check this here in my appliance configuration on networking. I usually tend to use DNS names instead, but the other one wants to have an IP address. In this case, this is 162. It's the wrong one. Here we go. The SPP username is the username of an administrative user on the safeguard side. In this code, you can use admin, or maybe you have already defined some kind of safeguard administrative account. And the well-known password as written in the documentation. You can have a nice description, external SP hash appliance like that. And the SPS username is the name of an administrative user on the SPS to be able to create the appropriate configuration changes that are required to make this integration run. So in this case, it is pretty easy admin and the password for the admin password. And now you're going to see that the box is setting up some kind of certificates and uh, trust relationships between this. So this should be OK as it is. And now it asks you if, if the certificate should be trusted so that you have an encrypted connectivity between these two appliances. Yes, of course it should be. Uh, and that is indeed the process to doing this. And of course, if you have done the join, you do not need the SSH access on the uh, privilege session appliance any longer. So in this case, simply switches on before you're playing around with the safeguard configuration. Otherwise, you may experience funny behavior. So just simply disable the server, commit the change, and then uh, let's have a look on it later here. Okay.